chosen Stan Falco, who's an American microbiologist, and he's sort of semi-retired now. But uh, he, he completely changed how microbiology is studied. He's just a wonderful man, wonderful man. What I do as a microbiologist is I try and understand how bacteria cause disease in humans. So you take bacteria, you look at their genetics, and then by looking at their genetics, you can try and understand what makes those bacteria different. So not all bacteria cause disease, only one or two do. And that makes them different from the others. And you look for the genes that make them different. And, and the whole point of doing that, the whole thought process of doing that was developed by Stan Falco. People used to think that all bacteria were the same and they all did the same thing. Uh, and then he really opened up the field. He's not a household name. Um, microbiology doesn't seem to be the sexiest scientific subject on the planet, unfortunately. I think a lot of people just think, oh, bacteria, you know, they're horrible little things. In microbiological circles, Stan Falco is the name. Everyone knows him when he speaks at conferences, they're packed out. Um, but yeah, he's not a household name, and yet, um, you know, the fact that we, the fact that we know that bacteria are resistant to antibiotics, and how they are resistant, and how we can develop new drugs, is all down to him. The fact that we now have novel vaccines based on one gene in an organism is all down to work that he pioneered. So it's a shame he's not a household name, but um, I definitely think he should be. So um, I first heard of him as, as a, an undergraduate microbiology student and, uh, and my lecturers would tell us to go off and read papers uh, and, and because the way we were studying microbiology was fairly new, a lot of it was based on Stan's work and, and so you know most of the papers that we were told to go and read had Stan Falco's name on the end of them and, uh, and you start to realise what he was doing and, and how fantastic it was and then as a PhD student I had the privilege of seeing him speak that conference and, and that was me, I was just kind of hooked from then and thought this is what I want to do. <laughs> My wife, who's also a microbiology lecturer, uh, worked in Stan's lab for, for two weeks, which I am ridiculously jealous about. Um, <laughs> And, and also, uh, my, my old boss, one of my old bosses, was very good friends with Stanley Falco. And, um, and, and so I did have the privilege of sort of bumping into him for the whole grand total of 10 seconds, which made my year. But, um, but that's just because I'm a bit of a hero worshipper, I guess. <laughs> I think everyone who meets Stan Falco and everyone who, who has met him and knows him well will tell you that he's actually a really, really nice guy, a, a wonderful man. Um, you know, you find in science, a lot of scientists who are extremely successful and get on in life maybe aren't um, the nicest people to work with because they're very driven and very focused and they demand the best. And, and Stan does demand the best, but from people I've spoken to and know him very well, they'll all tell you he's such a nice guy, he's very encouraging, you know, he, he wants the best for the people that work in his lab and, and apparently he's just a really, really nice guy. <laughs> He, he works in Stanford University in California and he's been there a long time. Before that he worked in the US National Institute um, of Health, so the, kind of, the, the military side of the US research centres. Um, and it was there that he discovered that how bacteria became resistant to antibiotics. Um, and he also discovered that it was a particular type of E. coli. So everyone thought of E. coli as being just E. coli, they were all the same. He found there was actually a particular type that caused diarrhea in millions of children in the developing world every year. And, and that really cemented his place. And, and then from there, he studied and, and allowed us to better understand lots of different really important bacteria that cause disease. So Salmonella, Shigella, which causes dysentery. He's worked on the organism that causes cholera. And, and recently, he's done a lot of work on the organism that causes stomach ulcers and stomach cancer. So he really had, you know, you think of the main bacteria that you would consider as important in human health and, and Stanley Falco has worked on them and made major discoveries on them. Previously, microbiology was based on a set of what are called Cox postulates. And this was a German guy who lived at the turn of the, the last century, the previous century. And he came up with a set of rules that you have to follow to prove a bacteria causes a disease. And when Stan Falco and some others came along and they realised that we, are doing, we should be studying the bacteria and how they work because not all bacteria are the same. So he came up with a new set of postulates called the molecular postulates. And these are like a Ten Commandments that all microbiology researchers use to study bacteria that cause disease in humans. Stan Falco devised them, he published them. They have been refined slightly since, but that was a landmark moment in microbiology and how microbiology studied. And, and I think really that's why Stan Falco has his place in, in microbiology as, as 
you know, what will be a legend in the field. Stanley still publishing um, review articles, letters in really high profile journals, which are, are really making people think about, um, you know, the work that they do. So he published it, he's, he's also got this wonderful writing style. A lot of scientists will write in a very um, complex way, you know, try and baffle people with their knowledge. Stanley writes these wonderful, almost like narrative novel type articles. Obviously, the, the prize that most members of the public will know about is the Nobel Prize, which is, you know, not everyone gets the Nobel Prize. Um, there's a prize, another prize in science called the Lasker Prize, which uh, very often people who have been awarded the Lasker Prize will also be awarded the Nobel Prize. So Stanley Falk a few years ago won uh, the Lasker Prize for his contribution, uh, his lifelong contribution to scientific research. I'd love to think that it would be a precursor to the Nobel Prize. Microbiologists don't get the Nobel Prize a lot. Um, the last really famous one was the two Australian gents who discovered the organism that causes stomach ulcers and cancers. Um, it'd be lovely if we had a microbiologist won the Nobel Prize. It'd be great for the subject.